There are various forms of expressive writing. One example that is particularly effective is called the three column technique. David Burns is a psychiatrist out of Stanford who wrote a very famous book called Feeling Good. It is cognitive behavioral therapy. And what cognitive behavioral therapy is, is that you understand your thoughts, you look at your behaviors and response to these thoughts, and then you change your thinking. It's called cognitive behavioral therapy. There are over 30 types of cognitive behavioral therapy, but you're looking at a specific behavior that you're trying to change your thoughts around. The book Feeling Good presents what's called bibliotherapy. <clears throat> In other words, you do the therapy just through a book. And his point was that you're about 85% effective in changing or being effective just using the book. When I was in my chronic pain mode, I was trying psychotherapy, medications, exercise, everything you can imagine. And I happened to pick up this book, Feeling Good by David Burns, and David said to write. So I started to write. When I first started the writing, I would write for hours. I was using the three column technique. And within two weeks, after 15 solid years of a tailspin, things began to shift. Now, expressive writing, free writing is very effective. But with the, with the three column technique, does it make it more granular so you have a more clear view of what's causing the mental disruption? Let me describe the three column technique. In the first column, you write down the disturbing or unpleasant thought. The second column, you categorize it into one of 10 categories that he suggests. Examples include labeling, should thinking, catastrophizing, minimizing the positive, exaggerating the negative. And what happens that you write down the thought, you know, put it into a category which creates a little bit of a space, then you write down the more appropriate thought. What I didn't know at the time that I now know is the essence of neuroplasticity. You have an awareness of the thought. You've now separated both with the piece of paper and understanding the label that you put on yourself or the type of distortion that it is. And then you've reprogrammed by writing down the more appropriate thought. One example that my wife is quite familiar with is that when we first got married, why she had a tendency to be late, actually pretty late. I had a tendency to be on time actually early. And so I was obsessively on time and she was sort of habitually late. It wasn't a good combination, especially on a trip where I'd be standing on the corner waiting for her to show up and it would take a while for her to get there. And my mind would start racing. She's inconsiderate. She always does this. What kind of a person is she? And what helped me is I would write things down. I would say, look, She's inconsiderate. Well, guess what? That's labeling. That's a cognitive distortion. The third column, I might write, well, she's late. I don't know the reason why, and we'll discuss it later. Another example is that your son comes home after curfew. And of course, the labels go right on. You go, he's doing this again. He always does this. He's inconsiderate. He's immature. The middle column, First of all, you, you would write down those thoughts. In the middle column, you would write down, I label them, I'm catastrophizing, I'm doing black and white thinking. The third column, you might write, you know something, I don't know why his behavior is like this. Maybe he's having some anxiety issues, maybe he's being bullied at school, and I'm gonna talk it over with him. Or what people often do, they put labels on themselves. So for instance, someone might say, including myself, that I have an addictive personality. Well, first of all, every human being has an addictive personality. Whether you know it or not, you simply do. So you might say, okay, I have an addictive personality. Well, of course, you just labeled yourself. And then what happens at a different level is that as that label is put on yourself, that becomes your filter that every behavior you do that you consider an addictive personality reinforces that label. It's deadly. So the third column, you might write down, I'm a human being. I have addictive tendencies like everybody else. And I'm, I'm going to become aware of them. And just that awareness often changes the game. But again, awareness, separation, reprogramming. 
Remember with neuroplasticity, you're changing the actual structure of your brain. You're changing the filter. The other thing that the three column technique does what I like is that, again, expressive writing is an, free writing is an exercise you simply separate from your thoughts, which is very powerful. But the three column technique, the three column technique gives you a granularity that you don't have with just the free writing. What you're doing, remember you have sensory input that creates a neurochemical reaction that's a threat or anxiety. Remember anxiety is a result of sensory input, it's not the cause. The cause in this situation is a cognitive distortion, it's an imagined threat, and as you write this down and change the thinking, you've actually changed the sensory input. So your output, this chemical reaction which creates the sensation of anxiety changes. You're not controlling the anxiety or the chemical reaction, but you are changing the sensory input. I do encourage people to start the expressive writing, just free writing, write down your thoughts, tear them up. It's just an exercise. The three column technique, once you get used to the writing, the three column technique is very simple, very effective. And I think it's the next stage in the expressive writing and the next stage of your journey.